Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Julia. Uh, I'm from Quasi. Uh, before we get started, please note that this webinar is going to be recorded and then it'll be posted on the Quasi website um, and archived there. And please feel free to post any questions um, in the chat. We'll do our best to answer them at the end of the webinar. But for now, let's get started. So welcome to the 2020 National Water Center Innovator Innovators Program Summer Institute intro webinar. Um, I'm Julia Masterman. Um, my role is the Science Education and Outreach Coordinator here at Quasi. And we're joined today by Fred Ogden, visiting senior scientist at the National Water Center, and Austin Rainey at the University of Alabama, who's a Summer Institute alum and a course coordinator for the upcoming Summer Institute. So just a quick outline, um, I'm going to give a general overview of what the Summer Institute is, then pass it over to Fred, who's going to tell us about his background and the role of summer in, his background and role in the Summer Institute, and give a description about the summer's themes. Then Austin's going to share a little bit about the student experience, and finally I'm going to wrap it up with some logistical information about applications, eligibility, and timeline. At the end, we'll have some time for questions. So feel free to put them in the chat throughout the talk, and we'll circle back to those at the end. So this summer will mark the sixth annual National Water Center Innovators Program, or Summer Institute, sometimes referred to as the SI. Um, the program was initially established in 2015 as a partnership between the National Weather Service and Quasi to help engage the academic research community in the enhancement of the national water model. And every year since, new and innovative science has come out of the program pertaining to aspects of the National Water Model. So, what is a Summer Institute? It's an intensive summer program in which graduate students conduct group projects that involve rapid prototyping of new ideas, ultimately culminating in a capstone presentation and publishable science on aspects of the National Water Model. The program is eight weeks long and held at the National Water Center in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And theme leaders from U.S. universities and staff at the National Water Center advise and work with students on projects throughout the summer, creating a unique environment for collaboration. So far, 147 students from 77 unique universities have been trained on the National Water Model through this program. The National Water Model is a continental scale model forecasting stream flow and flooding for the continental United States. Wharf Hydro, configured as the National Water Model, was operationalized August 2016 on NOAA HPC resources. The inputs to this model include USGS hydrogeography and elevation data sets, USDA statco soils, and NOAA atmospheric forcing data. The model provides stream flow for 2.7 million river reaches across the United States. This is a huge effort that is thanks to many researchers and organizations who are constantly contributing to the improvement of the model. The National Water Model produces short-range 18-hour forecasts throughout the day, as well as medium-range 10-day and long-range 30-day ensemble forecasts. Additionally, analysis runs produce 3 to 28-hour look-back range. The Office of Water Prediction website is linked here at the bottom of the slide and has a lot more information about the National Water Model, but in short, it's a very large and very complex model. The Summer Institute allows students an opportunity to advance research on specific aspects of this model in ways that align with this huge national effort. Research projects for the Summer Institute are arranged into what we call themes, um, and these themes are meant to guide research questions on different topics that are of special interest to the National Water Center and ultimately hope to improve the model. Um, and with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Fred, who's gonna give a more in-depth um, description of the themes for this year's Summer Institute. Thanks, Julia. Um, let's see if I can uh, get control of this thing. Uh, okay, there we go. I just saw something that's so there we go. Okay, it's working now. <laughs> it's, I'm running in the virtual box because it doesn't run. Uh, this go-to webinar thing doesn't run natively in Linux. So, um, so just quickly about me, I'm a civil engineer. 
um, uh, was a faculty member at the University of Connecticut from 94 to 2005, and then University of Wyoming until recently. Um, I'm a hydrologic model developer. I've had a hand in developing uh, three different models from scratch, uh, cast 2 d which morphed, uh, which morphed into uh, Geisha. And Geisha has been adopted by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And then uh, with NSF and NOAA funding, I developed another model called AD Hydro. That is a, uh, a pretty interesting model. It runs uh, natively on an HPC system for uh, hyper-resolution simulations. I've done tropical hydrology studies in the Panama Canal watershed from 2013 to 15 in the, uh, with the Smithsonian, excuse, the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute. Uh, I did a sabbatical here at the National Water Center 2015-16 when things were just getting started up. And uh, I led a team that identified the soil moisture velocity equation, which is a, a very interesting and robust way to solve Richard's equation. Uh, and presently, I'm a UCAR senior visiting scientist at the National Water Center, uh, and been working since 2017 as a as a lead for the Summer Institute or a theme lead or co-lead. Uh, the picture I hate black palm. That picture shows me cutting the hypodermic needle-like spikes off a black palm tree uh, in one of our field experiments in Panama. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. The, the Summer Institute uh, is uh, started out as the National Flood Interoperability Experiment, and which was kind of a, um, a, uh, a out of the box idea by David Maidment uh, back in I think started in 2016, uh, and it really um, is a very wonderful opportunity for students to get involved in something of national importance. Uh, it's an eight-week summer educational program that uh, the themes that we've identified this year are, include coastal coupling, hydrodynamics, and hydraulics, runoff modeling challenge, and uh, hydroinformatics and high-performance computing. Uh, we, we've had great participation in the past from uh, other NOAA agencies or entities such as the National Ocean Service. Uh, the USGS and the Army Corps of Engineers. They, they, they are all they're eager partners in the Summer Institute. Now, first I want to talk about the coastal coupling theme. Uh, this theme uh, is, is something that NOAA is very interested in because uh, there are really significant needs. This picture is funny. Uh, it's not funny. It's, uh, it's actually terrible. Uh, the, uh, the picture shows New Orleans after Katrina, 2005, uh, and what happens when the when levees can fail. So the coastal coupling theme involves uh, coupled coastal inland hydraulics, uh, storm surge levee failure and waves, complex hydrodynamics, wind, and density-driven flows, fluid structure interactions, and these kind of events seem to be happening more frequently. For example, Katrina in 05, Harvey in 2017, uh, which impacted the Houston area and, and other parts of coastal Texas and Louisiana, and Florence in 2019 that impacted the Carolinas. Uh, this picture was, pro slide was provided by Celso Ferriera, who was one of the theme leads from last summer just give, giving you an idea, some pictures of uh, some of the problems. That lower middle picture, that's from Super Storm uh, Sandy, 2012. The problem, coastal com uh, compound coastal flooding, where you have uh, high winds that drive flow uh, into the coastline, storm surge due to uh, the, the reduction of barometric pressure associated with tropical storms, and, uh, and then you add on to that waves and tides, you can, that can cause coastal flooding, and then you get riverine flooding or even just uh, localized flooding. That's what is called compound coastal flooding. So that's a, that's a really challenging problem. 
but it doesn't even have to be uh, a significant flood to cause problems and effects on infrastructure. Uh, for instance, if there is a, a, a mild tropical system that happens to uh, uh, coincide with a high tide, for instance, you can have situations where infrastructure, bridges, et cetera, would be impacted. Ships wouldn't be able to go under bridges and things like that. Now in the, the runoff generation theme, uh, I like to show this figure. For gauges in the US, uh, stream gauges, excuse me, where the USGS provides basin uh, annual uh, rainfall or precip estimates, we calculated the uh, annual runoff ratio, which would be the annual runoff volume divided by the annual uh, basin average rainfall amount. And there's some really interesting features that show up on this plot. The, the current version of the national water model applies the same physics over the entire continental US. And there, our analysis of the results have indicated that there's room for improvement, particularly in certain regions. And those regions coincide somewhat with this analysis. I, I took that, that runoff ratio map and throwed up some lines that kind of highlight some of the, uh, the distinct hydro regions that we see. Pacific Northwest, really high runoff ratios. It, it rains a lot there, and it tends to fall in the cold season or the cool season when ET isn't very high. The uh, Basin and Range Province, there's a, there's some high runoff ratios in the uh, Sierra Nevada. There's a few uh, snowmelt dominated watersheds in it's a Utah and Northern Nevada. But th for the most part, they tend to be very low runoff ratios, except for one down in Southern Arizona that's a groundwater dominated watershed. Uh, in the Rockies, we have high runoff ratios primarily because in the mountains, there's one big runoff event a year that's associated with the snowmelt. Uh, the high plains uh, west of 100 degrees uh, west longitude, we're getting into the semi-arid area where annual precip is considerably less than uh, annual potential ET, plus we're on the, uh, the high plains aquifer or the, the sand, the triatus that was left by the, the erosion of the Paleo Rockies. You have the prairie potholes in the northern high plains with, uh, even though you start to get into more rainfall in that area, you get less runoff because it has a harder time reaching the stream. In South Texas, we have a lot of karst. So we see, even though we, we're on the Gulf Coast and we have high, high amounts of rainfall, we tend to see lower runoff ratios. In the Corn Belt, uh, in the Midwest of the country, there's a, a lot of rain, but it tends to fall in the uh, in the, the warm season, and is uh, the runoff ratios are higher there. Down at the Gulf Coast, the, the runoff ratios are about the same as the cold Corn Belt, but there's it, it rains a lot more there, but it, it predominantly comes during the growing season. And then we've got some karst in in Florida. You see a uh, lake effect area with enhanced runoff ratios up around the Great Lakes. On the windward side of the Appalachian Mountains, there's an enhanced runoff uh, efficiency because of the orographic effect. And the flip side of that coin, you see a mid-Atlantic rain shadow in the Carolinas, Virginia, mid-Atlantic area, where there's um, a lot more uh, the blockage of moisture by the Appalachians. And then there's maritime climate up in, in southern New England. Uh, so all of this heterogeneity uh, that we can see in terms of this behavior, how much rainfall on an annual basis becomes runoff, definitely gives us a, an indication that maybe what the, the important processes in one part of the country are different than in another, which hints at some efficiencies that might be uh, achieved in the national water model by identifying different physical representations of processes in different parts of the country. For the uh, the third theme, the hydroinformatics, HPC, uh, and remote sensing theme, remote sensing is actually part of this. 
uh, continental scale hydrology, uh, we have a number of identified different uh, areas of interest, inland and coastal hydrography and bathymetry, uh, and then identifying with the, associated with those data, we need data standards, consistent representations, and computational hydrofabric. And that's, uh, that's a pressing national need that uh, many uh, federal agencies are, are working on and actually developing some really interesting approaches for. Uh, LIDAR for bathymetry and floodplain measurements and hydro feature detection. Uh, LIDAR can uh, actually see through clear water and measure the bottom of uh, streams. Uh, and a, a real interesting potential use of it is being able to use LIDAR to detect linear or quasi-linear features on the floodplain like embankments or flood walls that would wouldn't show up in an ordinary PEM. Uh, hydrospheric coupling, uh, how do we numerically couple different simulations in different parts of the hydrosphere? Uh, output identification, when do we know how, or wh when do we know, how do we know when to tell a supercomputer to save some output? That's an interesting challenge because if you save everything all the time, you save way too much and it slows your computer model down and it's hard to go back and sift through. Uh, flood visualization is a problem that several groups have, have looked at in the past and maybe there are some interesting new things to be done there. Confidence in modeling and identification of model confidence is important. Evaluation of forcing forecasts and of hydro forecast, use of machine learning and appropriate efficient solvers if we want to go all the way from the, the evaluation to the data to the actual numerics of models, it's all on the table at this point. And the theme leads that, that will be representing this theme will be uh, national and international experts on that topic. So those are the kind of a broad overview of the, of the three themes. We, uh, we want students, and the kind of students that we want are those who would like to write uh, computer code to solve problems. Uh, students that are interested not in models, but in algorithms or methods. Uh, we look for students who relish the opportunity to work in diverse groups, and, and we have, as Austin will talk about, uh, a really wide cross-section of students in a typical summer institute. And we want students who want to work in an open source collaborative paradigm because uh, that is the, the way of the future. And we want to make sure that we can, uh, not just as we stand on the shoulders of giants, we want to be able to let people stand on uh, or borrow from our code and perhaps advance the field as well. And uh, I think that's it for me. Austin? Yeah, thanks, Fred. Um, let's see. I do have control, excellent. Yeah, thanks Fred and thanks Julia. Um, as, as Fred has mentioned so far, um, the Summer Institute is, is, has a, a wide interest in, in the student base um, that we're looking for. There's so many different projects um, going on, which that, that for me was a huge draw um, because there's so many people who are, uh, for the most part, interested in water and how water affects um, the place that we live and the people who inhabit um, the U.S. and, and the world, um, but maybe are experts in, in differing fields. And uh, there's there's a, a really wide um, set of students, but at the same time, uh, they're, they're kind of all focused on the same thing, which is great to get different viewpoints. Um, again, my name is Austin Rainey. I am um, a graduate student here at the University of Alabama, um, and I, most of the work that I do revolves directly around the National Water Model. Um, I, I'm looking specifically at uh, the bankful condition in the model um, and, and really the channel geometry itself. Um, but let me see if... Oh. Cool. So uh, I want to just to speak to the, the student experience. So uh, over this past summer, I was um, in, a, in attendance uh, of the, in the uh, Institute and, and prior to, to this uh, webinar, I was you know, thinking about how can I summarize my experience uh, 
in, in a really succinct way. And uh, the sentence that I came up with was, it was it was hard work and and a ridiculous amount of fun. Um, we all worked extremely hard um, working in, in teams on projects that should have taken much longer than the the five weeks that we were allotted. But um, we had a ridiculous amount of fun working hard. But then also, um, as you can see on the right, um, we we went to a cave over the summer in northeastern Alabama, as well as we went to three major uh, southern cities visiting Nashville and Atlanta as well as New Orleans um, and explored greater Tuscaloosa as well just to, um, it, it's not only about working really hard um, it's it's also about um, creating new relationships with with people who are kind of in your sub discipline or um, on the edges of your discipline and and really growing as a student I would say that as a as a student um, in any level of academia, this was by far the most impactful summer that I've I've had in learning how to work with people from um, different cultures, um, working in different uh, subdisciplines, coming from different um, working in different paradigms, um, as well as how how to present your research to uh, effectively present things that you're doing every week to um, an audience that is you're, you're presenting every week to National Water Center employees as well as your fellow um, Summer Institute uh, colleagues and these people know things this isn't uh, you could compare it to presenting at a conference but it's a it would be a very specific conference so you get a lot of great experience presenting research um, which which I found uh, tremendously useful uh, as well as uh, Fred just harped on it. Uh, one of the things that I found most attractive was um, the the push to produce open source science and produce open source material. So every single um, every single team that was in the prior year Summer Institute has published all of their code on GitHub. Um, you can find all of their repos very easily off of Kawazi's website, um, and and that's just that's excellent. We don't want to um, we, we want to make it easy, easily accessible for people to to use the things that we've created and also add to them and critique them and, and just work together. So all of those things um, were a culmination of just an, an excellent summer. I really couldn't speak highly enough about um, the student experience itself. And, and Tuscaloosa does have um, a lot of, of great things to offer. It, it might sound really hot, which it is in the summer, um, but there, there is a lot of fun things to do here, and it's really nice when all of the students are gone in Tuscaloosa. It's a, it has a much smaller town feel that is, it's really genuine, um, and and I enjoy it. So um, that that's the the student experience. Um, now, as taking on the role as a course coordinator, um, you can see on the left that's myself and the other course coordinator for uh, the upcoming. Summer Institute, Kyla Simmendinger, she is at uh, Cornell. Uh, but the two of us will be your course coordinators if you're to, to become a student this summer. Um, and our role is to help prepare for the summer. So having meetings with, with theme leaders and preparing the themes, preparing the questions, uh, potential questions that students and teams can approach uh, this summer as well as hosting some webinars uh, to once once students have been chosen to kind of guide them in the right direction and answer any questions that they might have about uh, living, spending the summer in Tuscaloosa and more, more student experience questions and uh, just become more intimately familiar with what to expect. Um, but the real fun really begins when when the Summer Institute kicks off um, in, in June. So that's when we'll kind of be the liaison between uh, theme leaders and the National Water Center and students, making sure students have housing, uh, all those accommodations are, are resolved, um, and just setting up students for success. Um, we also, having participated in the Summer Institute, have a really a great power of being able to empathize with students over some of the stress that might be involved in 
in projects. Um, and we've also been in Tuscaloosa before, so we we can definitely uh, help you out in you know figuring out things to do as well as um, if, if you do have technical issues in your um, in your projects. We we both really want to help students um, and teams uh, succeed this summer institute. Uh, we both, uh, myself and Kyla, I think it's it's safe for me to speak for her that we we both really. Uh, pursue open source science and, and wanting to engage in making the national water model better for for um, for the US. So that's that's the summer. That's that's kind of our course coordinator role. I'll pass it back over to um, to Julia, though, um, for the logistics and applications. Hi, Austin. Uh, thanks. So as we wrap up, um, I just wanted to give some logistical information for people who may be interested in applying. So the Summer Institute uh, is open for current graduate students affiliated with U.S. universities. Um, and it's also, as uh, Austin mentioned, students will reside on site at the University of Alabama for the entirety of the program, um, which is uh, great, and will receive uh, reimbursement for travel expenses to and from Tuscaloosa and a meal stipend while attending the program. Um, dorm style lodging will also be provided uh, at the University of Alabama. And um, the whole program culminates in a large capstone um, event where students will present the projects they've been working on all summer. And travel support is available to um, students' home advisors to attend um, that capstone event to see uh, what participants have been up to also. So the application requirements uh, for the Summer Institute, the applications are open now. Um, they're submitted through proposal space, which you can access through the Quasi website. And they'll require a statement of interest, CV, transcript, and a letter of endorsement from faculty advisor, pretty typical application stuff. Um, and it's important that participants have the support of their advisor um, from their home university because they will be working on Summer Institute stuff summer and we want to make sure that um, advisors are on board with that. The application period is going to close January 13th so keep that in mind. Maybe speak to your advisor sooner rather than later with the holidays and their break coming up and feel free to contact us with any questions you might have about the application or anything else um, if you are um, if you have any. Julia this so, is Fred. I wanted to uh, just yeah at the fall meeting we have a special session that will be uh, starting Thursday and going through Friday on National Water Model. Uh, it's on simulating heterogeneity from summit to sea. And there will be past year students attending and uh, quite a few of the current and past uh, course coordinators as well, or theme co-leads. So you can um, circulate and ask a lot of questions there. Right, for, for sure. Just to piggyback off of that, Fred, uh, both um, Kyla and I will be, um, she, she's presenting on Friday at um, the town hall, and, and I'll also be around at AGU that week uh, if you do have any questions. Yep, so there's plenty of time for that as well. Awesome. Um, and Quasi will also be at uh, AGU uh, and available for questions. Um, but just to finish up a little bit more, Logistics here, um, the dates for the Summer Institute this year are June 8th through July 24th. Um, and we invite you to apply today. Once again, I'm Julia, um, and my contact information is up there. If you have any questions after this, we're gonna open it up for questions in a moment. Um, and a big thanks to Fred Ogden and Austin Rainey for their time and expertise. Um, and presentations and resources about the Summer Institute will be available both at the AGU and NOAA, or at the uh, Quasi and NOAA booths at AGU. Um, so come see us there. So with that, let me check out what questions we have. Um, feel free to post any in the uh, chat on um, GoToWebinar. So 
I'm not seeing any questions. Yet. Awesome. So um, if anyone else has any other questions, feel free to reach out to me and I can pass it along um, to either Fred or Austin or anyone else that might be able to help. Um, and as Fred mentioned and Austin, there will be a number of events um, at AGU uh, with opportunities to learn more. The, that information will be up on the Quasi website um, in the coming weeks. So uh, check up on that for more updates. And um, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks, everybody.